Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. You know, I think he had some shots early in the game um, that he that he didn't take. Um, but I think he settled down, and in the second half, he was able to, you know, we got some single coverage, and, uh, you know, they're playing a lot of a lot of double, basically double coverage on Thielen and, and uh, Jefferson on third downs, and then we finally got in some plays where we could get some single coverage with them. And welcome into Purple Daily. This is the comments from YouTube edition, which we, of course, do every Monday. Zolgad and Declan Goff. Uh, Zimmer there talking about Kirk Cousins and the fact that um, – Kirk either either didn't throw to Jefferson in double coverage much if you listen to Kirk, or if you listen to <laughs> Mike, he did, but he took the shots. Um, the, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. But anyway, Declan Goff, you have comments from our listeners oh, yes. that flow in during the course of the week. How do people uh, get these questions to us? Yeah, all you have to do is comment on our YouTube videos, specifically the, our, our vet line episodes on Sunday, because we like to review. There, there's always so much to talk about after wins, after losses uh, in, in the NFL. So comment on our edition of vent line, and then we will uh, gladly read your comments. I'll parse through them. And I, I sense a theme, Judd, uh, from a lot of these commenters that we're going to touch on here. And I, I'm actually going to assume that we'll have more of these type of conversations, both on Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily. Uh, leading up to this next week's game. Let's kick off this one, though, from Lauren. He says, big bleeping deal. They won a game. Let me see them do it again next week against the best team in the league. It took Zimmer 10 weeks to figure out how to throw the ball to Jefferson. Like like I said, show me you can do it again. And a bunch of other comments, very similar on this vein. This one from Michael, too. At the Vikings' full potential, this will be the Packers' biggest opponent this week. A lot of comments here basically saying, all right, yeah, you beat the Chargers, a nice team, but not really that impressive either. Mm -hmm. Can they do this again? Can they replicate this again on Sunday against the Packers and, 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 and basically save their season and put themselves in position to make the playoffs? This is why I love our viewers and listeners. This is what makes them different. They're not the, oh, hooray, we won one game. Now the season's changed. Um, they are discerning fans. They are understand that what they saw was productive, but yet we need to see it more and more. And my answer is I have no clue because it depends on what the coaching staff does. It depends on what this team does. It depends on um, if this was a bunch of bad players, okay, who popped up and had a good game. I'd be like, no, probably not. Bunch of bad players. They had a good game. That happens, especially in this league. But my theory, and, and where I think I side with the people whose comments you just read, Dex, my theory is this has as much or more to do with execution and coaching. So it's not the players. Um, is, is this a great Vikings team? Absolutely not. Do they have some really good players? Yes, absolutely. So so if the if the people are speaking and they are saying, hold on a second here. Prove it again. As as Herb Brooks said in Miracle, again, again, again. Um, I'm with them, Dex. I'm not sure about you, but I am willing to make no pronouncement that yesterday changed things. Was it a step in the right direction? Yes. Is Justin Jefferson, his involvement as maddening as it is because it took so long, is a breath of fresh air and should continue? But I'm sorry. I don't have the faith to just say, it's a done deal now. Um, I see it as progress, but I am totally with the fans saying, okay, that's cool. Let's see it again. And and if you do, do it again against Packers, let's see it again and keep doing that because the formula that they put together yesterday, win or lose, gives you the best chance to win. I think it's a step in the right direction. It's an impressive win. Um, the Chargers are a good team. They're certainly not the cream of the crop in the AFC right now, but they are a good team. They'll they'll be in the postseason. It's a crowded division, the AFC West. I mean, everyone's within within a game. All but the Chiefs uh, lost yesterday in that division, I believe, as well. So the Chiefs now back on top, but still, it's a all four of those teams in the West are gunning for it. But from the Vikings side, um, I thought it was a step in the right direction. Um, I think Mike Zimmer being aggressive on third down and fourth downs yesterday was a sign of things to come. 
I know there. I, I could get poisoned by that apple taking a bite out of it, but I, I think it was very telling that he was able to finally go and do that. Uh, William brings up a good point, too. Yeah, he says they beat an overrated Chargers team, but that being said, Kirk looked really good. The offensive line looked improved. I actually don't agree with him on that one. Uh, they schemed the offense to get the ball to their weapons, which was refreshing, mm -hmm. and the defense did a good job of not collapsing at the end of the game like they normally do. I am expecting next week against the Packers to go back to the conservative play calling and atrocious defense. They still need to fire Zimmer. So, yes, it's, it's kind of funny hearing all these fans who are saying, good win, but can you do it again? Yeah, can and you I do it again. And and I think the Z, I think the Zim thing, short of a miraculous turnaround that results in a long playoff run, I think he's done here. Um, but I think the most encouraging thing is twofold that we saw in Inglewood, California, on Sunday. One is the Jefferson aspect because that's who he is. He's that good. And you know what? He's going to drop some balls. He's going to drop a ball every now and then. He's going to be human. But more often than not, if you throw in the ball, he's going to catch it. The other thing, and I talked about this, I think, on uh, Purple Daily Today with Mackie, was we got a sneak preview of what can be starting in 2022 with the right coaching staff. This is what can be. And and the formula, but it's, it is, Declan, tip of the iceberg. So, like, there's way more to unlock there and way more to potentially come. But what we saw on Sunday against the Chargers is a step in the right direction, definitely. And imagine an offensive-minded coach who puts that that in and a lot more. So that's why it, it was encouraging. But, yeah, I am in no way saying that that Zim and Cousins and Clint Kubiak uh, now get it. I still contend something happened behind the scenes that caused the transformation because you don't just wildly go from from uh, what Dex nine weeks right. of that to what we saw Sunday. Um, now, if it had been two games and then it starts in, yeah, I get that. But that adjustment was too sudden. Something took place, and the question is: was was that an okay? We'll do this, or was that a you know what? Transformation time. Perfect transition from Chris, who says, on what planet is it acceptable that the Vikings coaches are just now finally realizing Sorry. that good things happen when you make a concerted effort to get the ball to 18? Which is why I think it, I think there's an, a, another influence, and I don't know if it was Thielen, Jefferson, or what. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly right. That's 100% right. And uh, what, last one here before we get to a bunch of Mike Zimmer comments um, on this comments episode of YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, like button. If uh, if you're liking what you hear, we provide daily Minnesota Vikings entertainment on this channel. Rebel Vikings 912 says, we're not back. We're not back. We're still mediocre at best. I'm not surprised we won. They always doing this. They always do this. I'm not getting sucked in yet. Uh, yes. Yes. Amen. That's exactly right. Good for, you know what? That's a person who's protecting their heart and feelings. <laughs> because it's true. Think about this, Dax. Last year, with a team that was worse than this one, for sure. One and five, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked on, on Purple Daily continually about it's just time to get the draft pick. Like, get the high draft pick. Get a quarterback. They go into Green Bay, out of the bye. And we're like, they're going to get smoked. They won. So yes, I if you if you elect to look at Sunday's win and say I need to protect me, I don't blame you one bit. Do you? No, 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 not at all. This I, is I, very Vikings. You, you should have a little bit of a guard up here, even with um, impressive things that happened in that Chargers game against a good team. And I, I actually do I agree I do I agree with the sentiment from from fans that say that's not a that's not a true road game. I mean. It really isn't. It's seventy degrees. Oh. Yeah, forty percent. I know traveling's difficult, but like I I don't in terms of. Easy games on the road, that's as easy as it gets. I, I, I really do think so. Interesting. Yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, Christon says, not to be a negative Nancy, but you say there isn't a lot that went wrong in this game from a coaching standpoint. I strongly disagree. End of the first half, incompetent. End of the game, incompetent as well. Huh? Making progress, but I was banging my head against the wall, and my girlfriend, who doesn't even completely understand football, texted me like, what is going on? I, I'll agree with Tristan here. The end of the first half, again, was... Yeah. Baffling. I yes. actually disagree with, with Tristan here. Them taking the shots, 
the pass on third down to, to Jefferson, the fourth fourth down and two. I mean, that's a conundrum when you have to go for around fourth down there. I wouldn't call that incompetent. I actually how's think, that bad? Yeah, I actually think at the end of the game that was competent. It was yes. the first time. It was a sign of of things to come. Look here. Here's the step. There, Mike Zimmer kept his defense off the field. That's a huge step. So basically, his premise in life is let my defense play, right? Yeah. And and the third and I think it was third and twenty, the eighteen yard pass that was completed, and then you just said it, the uh, two yard fourth and two run or Cooks run was no, that was a big big step because they basically finally said. Let's let the offense win it. So, yes, the the end of the first half I don't get because they used their timeouts correctly. They gave themselves a ton of time. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, they're going to actually take some shots here, right? And they didn't. So Tristan's a 1,000% right about the end of the second quarter. But I think the end of the game, I think that's one of actually the better end-of-game sequences in Mike's tenure here. Easily. Easily. Like, I love that because your offense, you're – the more that everybody, including Mike, accepts your offense is is more important than your defense, mm-hmm. the more that we are making progress. And I guarantee you the next coach is going to operate on that premise consistently, and it's the correct premise to take. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I thought Zimmer's quote at the end of the game at the podium on Sunday after they beat the Chargers was very telling us we wanted to win the game there. It could have been very easy for. We'll play field position, right? We'll have the defense who has been stopped and come yeah, we'll out punt. there. We'll punt. Our defense was was great all game. Blah blah blah. I mean, it would have been easy as heck for Zimmer to say that, yep. and he didn't. And he did not. I thought that was extremely, extremely telling. I agree. What he was able to do. Uh, Matt brings up a good question here. Would love for you guys to address this this week. Is there anything you can see this year so that you'd keep Zimmer? Not if the Wilfs do it. But if you were the owner, what would you need to see Maddie. to keep Zimmer around? Great question here, man. Super Bowl championship. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's no way. What about an appearance? <sighs> it's just run its course. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Appearance. But that's it. It's just run its course. It's just done. Um, he was a very. No, that's not true. He was a good head coach here for a while. And his when he got here through about 2017, his defense wins approach still I thought worked. Um, but I it and it it's not like I hate him and it's not like I'm mad. I just think it's done, Dex. I think that the league has shifted. Um, the cousins thing ultimately is not going to work the way that you had had hoped. It's very clear that the real shot and look, they just blew it was uh, 2000. 17 with case which is weird to say but it's true (laughs) no there's nothing like i think you just need to make a change you need this franchise as far as i'm concerned if it's me dex i am changing gm and coach Mm -hmm. uh but that but that means that i would be confident in myself to find the right people and that's where we do get to the next question of do the wilfs have the confidence in themselves to identify if nothing else, the GM who can then identify the coach. Jackson says, I'm honestly worried that the Vikings will sneak into the playoffs, somehow win one game, and the Wills will keep Zimmer and not look for a new coach. It is scary to think that we'll remain on purple purgatory for years to come. Judd, let's let's play mm. that out. Let's say they win mm. wild card weekend and again they lose mm. divisional round. Twenty nineteen basically all over again. Yeah. Percent chance, just your gut right now, that they'd keep Zimmer if they won the wild card game. That the Wilfs would not. So take yourself out of right. it. What would the Wilfs do in that situation? Thirty-five percent. That they that he stays really. That he That's stays. it. That's, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think there's going to be enough momentum. I think they've seen enough. I really do. Um, so yeah. Now, if he wins a second round game, so if, if it's 2019 again, a repeat of that, Declan, and they go to San Francisco like they did in 19 and win. Mm-hmm. It probably goes up significantly, but I think if they win a wild card game, if they sneak in seventh seed, which by the way can be a bad team, like that seed's not going to be that. No, not at all. Some good team. It's going to be a bad team. So if they sneak in, they upset a team and then get their arses handed to them, like they did against the Niners in 2019 in the second round, I think he's probably gone. So I'll say in, in that case, 35. percent I, I think you? It's, I think it's 55 in favor. He stays. I, mm. I I think it's more of a coin flip. 
right now, as it stands, probably depends what happens in that game. Do you get your asses kicked like you did in San Francisco? Is it close? Was there something fluky? Was there something not going your way? The the Wilfs seem to default to bad luck. I don't know. There's something about this organization, especially in the Zimmer and Spielman. Oh, it's just bad luck. And maybe that's a Minnesota yeah. sports crux that it's unfortunately clogged my brain with other uh, teams in this town. But I could see them if they, like, if they lost that game on a field goal or a technicality bad call or something, I could say, well, we're going to run it back again. We're going to run it back again. I, yeah, I, I, just I, I don't weird, want that to happen, but I think that's how the Wolves would look at it. I have a weird feeling that this is it, that it's just gone. It's okay. gone so far. And I, I would guess, I would, I would guess right now that if you went and asked them true and got a truthful answer, do you wish that you had made a move after 19? They would now say yes. Just think about how the league has changed and just think about like what Mike believes. And, and I mean, Dex, it took until what the Vikings are nine games in and we're 10 weeks in. Mm -hmm. It took until yesterday to identify the fact that Mike should, if nothing else, tell Kirk that 18 is good. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like, like it's just so unfathomable. Um, you don't have to be a football expert. And and it's on Mike. Like this whole thing about I'm tell I'm telling you, this is the second time this year that he has made a point of saying, I've told Kirk to turn it loose. Dude, you're the boss. Call the play. You, I Kirk, look, you sign Kirk. He works for you. And so are you telling me that Kirk is insubordinate? Like, in some ways, he's trying to convince us that Kirk is being told, cut it loose. And he's like, hell no, not going to cut it loose. <laughs> to Justin Jefferson? Now, do I believe that Kirk is risk adverse? Absolutely, I do. I know that for a fact. But this whole thing of every five weeks to be like, I'm telling him to throw deep. Really, dude? I mean, Justin Jefferson, Thielen, this offense? To your point from PD, KJ Osborne. Where the hell is he? Yeah. So, but are you telling me you're you're honestly saying the quarterback, a guy who has told us he doesn't have the right to call a timeout? I think he's lying too. But anyway, think about this, Declan. A guy who told us he doesn't have the right to call a timeout is now the coach is telling us he won't make those plays. Really? Like these people believe we're so stupid. That's what it, that's what irritates me. They think we're so dumb that we will buy what they're saying. Mm-mm. And it's why it's why these pressers you have to basically sift through what they all say, and it's like a puzzle. Put together the truth. Mm -hmm. Like Jefferson told a lot of truths. Now he doesn't give you a lot of information, like technically. But I'll go back to this. Think about this again. This is incredible. So the film that the film Knicks told us the Detroit game that after Jefferson had the big first half, which was like a hundred and two yards or something, right? That the Lions, the Lions adjusted too deep, couldn't throw to him. So what? So you, then yesterday, Ben Gessling, Star Tribune, said, sure seemed like there was a lot of plays that were open in the middle of the field. And Jefferson said, yeah, they played a lot of too deep. That leaves a lot of chances to make plays in the middle of the field. So basically, what we're being told is against Detroit, they just didn't think of that. See, that's where I. That's. That's where I just think this whole thing has run its course. It's it's just divorce time, man. It's okay. Uh, Judd, a couple more comments here on this comments edition of YouTube. But you know what? I'll tell you what doesn't run its course because you you hit a birthday this weekend, fifty two, and it doesn't matter if you're fifty two mm. or even the reciprocal of that, twenty five. You can always enjoy a nice surly furious from our oh, friends at Surly Brewing. A delicious one, and in, in fact, I was. Um, I sat on the couch, just quickly, Dex, sat on the couch from, I want to say, 11 a.m. to midnight on Saturday. On your birthday. Watched on my birthday. It was great. Dawn was was at home in oh, Iowa. The wife was gone? The wife was gone. And, you know, I thought I could go to a bar. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to sit on my couch. I'm going to watch sports, and I'm going to enjoy a couple of delicious, delicious, my first round draft pick, if you will, mm -hmm. Surly Furious's. QB1. 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 QB. You know what? QB1. You know what? Here's, let me give you, just to put this in context, <laughs> let me give you what the Vikings did yesterday, okay? Think about if I had, had been do, doing this surly brewing endorsement now, which I think I have been since the start of, of the, season. the season, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about if I came in today and, to, and said, you know what, Declan, I did this weekend, first time ever, 
I decided to try it. I decided to try Surly Brewing, and the Furious is delicious. I can't believe it. And you'd be like, are you an idiot? Of yeah, course it is. I would call you that. Like, think about that. Like, just mm-hmm. to give you context, that's what the Vikings did. Justin Jefferson's good. I have been playing the Surly Furious card since week one. And you know what? Right now, I'm nine games in. I'm 9-0. Oh. I'm 9-0 oh because I've been making the move, QB1, that makes sense. Surly Furious, I drink it. A lot of you do, too. We appreciate that. And if you don't drink it, try it. Surly Furious. Don't settle. Get Surly. A couple more comments here before we wrap. Uh, Tommy says, oh boy. Zim wasn't hard-headed today. He allowed the QB to throw on second third, yeah. and fourth downs yep. after all negative first down running plays. <laughs> this, I think, goes back to the old theory, Judd. I mean, as great as that was, yep. is that going to be the recipe to beat the Packers? Can they do that again? Will they want to do that again? Now, the Packers' defense is good. It's pretty damn good. The Chargers were really good against the pass, um, and they were, and they aren't good against the run. You know what, Dex? To go back to question one and answer one, we're going to find out. Like, I just don't don't know. I can't. Can you sit here and say, I think they found it and they're going to continue to do things and evolve? I can't. Not yet, at least. Mm-mm. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I wish I could. But I feel like if I sat here right now and said, you know what? Eureka. They found it. It's fixed. It's fine. I feel like I'd be lying. And our listeners deserve more. Our listeners, our, our listeners don't come to us for therapy to hear therapists who lie. What's more likely, Judd, that Aaron Rodgers remains a little rusty, but she looked rusty against the Seahawks yesterday. Yeah, that must have been an ugly game. It, it huh? was hideous. I, I didn't we watch it. We weren't able to watch either because yeah. we were we were I saw the highlights. doing our game, and at the, yeah, they only had like ten points or three points through the first three quarters. It was three points, I think, through three quarters. Yeah. So he, they, they are coming here at least. It is a home game yep. for the Vikings uh, at US Bank Stadium next Sunday. Is it more likely that we see more rust from Aaron Rodgers, or is this going to be a classic Aaron Rodgers? I'm on a revenge tour. I am pissed off, and I'm going <sighs> to stick it to the purple, purple crush, as he uh, so elegantly puts it at, at at his podium press conferences here in Minneapolis. Okay, I'm just going to guess. Okay. It's an indoor game. It's a second game back. If Patrick Peterson, now he is eligible to come back from the hamstring, but he's also 30-something, mm-hmm. and so I'm not guaranteeing it. <clears throat> if Breland and Dantzler start, I've got a feeling that he's going to have a big game. But the comeback to that is, if the Vikings' offense can respond, it could be a shootout. If Peterson comes back, he'll be rusty himself, but it's better. But the one thing that really surprised me was, although they picked on him at times, I thought Herbert would go after the corners and Breland in particular deep more. And it didn't seem like they really did. And I don't think Devontae Adams and the Packers are going to pass up that chance. That's my guess. Yeah, and also, even though um, they dodged a bullet, Aaron Jones is only going to be out like two weeks uh, with his but MCL he will miss this game. That but he'll helps. miss this game. But that you know helps. what? AJ Dillon's a, is a, is a perfect example. He's a load, right? Yeah, he's a, he's like a nice a running guy. guy. He's a big dude, but he's a, he's a good back, and yep. this, he's a perfect example of just like with the Vikings with Alexander Madison and Canal Kanenu Wangu. Maybe you don't pay okay. running backs because it's not worth it. Um, I think you're going to see more of a pissed off Rodgers, and that scares me. That scares me more. Indoors obviously. too. It's not yeah. cold. It was cold in Green Bay on Sunday. Yeah. It was snowy. And so. he, perf- you know, he does perform well in cold weather. I'll give him that. He, he's usually pretty damn good. But the first um, game back was probably a little bit tough. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and then last one here from Eric. He says, "Yeah, Jefferson got involved, but don't forget about Thielen. Adam Thielen needs the ball in his hands as well. Look, I, I'm on the, and I think you'll you obviously agree too." Um, I'm on the train that Jefferson needs more targets than Thielen. I yeah. think that's great. What I think you should do is you take that recipe that they did yesterday, 18 combined targets. You can even throw 19 because I believe they did an end around to, to Jefferson. So 19 touches for both Thielen and Jefferson with Jefferson having more of uh, of those. I think that should be the recipe. 19 yeah. targets for both of them. And if that means it's Jefferson that gets 15 and Thielen gets you know three or however if it's 50% down the middle, I don't care. I think as long as those two are being featured predominantly, yep. I don't care what, what what the targets end up being. Really. To piggyback off your your points from before, uh, one, I am in your camp totally. Justin Jefferson, make no mistake, wide receiver one. Okay, so this isn't a they're a nice duo, Thielen and Jefferson. That's a nice. It's not. This is this is no longer the Diggs 
Thielen conversation. I'd be very comfortable with 20 targets total between Jefferson, who I'd like to see around 12, Thielen, and Osborne. Thielen and Osborne, until until K.J. Osborne proves to me he can't play, which he has not done. No, he's a good player. Thielen and Osborne serve can serve the same role, and one of them can be open. Yeah, I, um, which is which is I thought the catches decks that Thielen made on Sunday were perfect, but go back and watch what Jefferson did. Like watch those catches; um, they're incredible. Like there's a couple that are just phenomenal. Thielen is is I think a weapon, and I thought that his his use on Sunday is fine. And if you want to distribute some of that. To Osborne, that's fine too. But I would, between those three, what I would like to see as a starting point, just a starting point, 20 targets total. Go from there. Yeah. I think, Sound I think, fair? Tw- yeah, 20. Yeah, 20. But let's not, let's not go, let's not try and sell the Minnesota theme of Thielen too, Thielen and Jefferson. Let's not do that no more, okay? Yeah, Jefferson's the stud here. Let's just put that aside. That's that, fine. That was fun. And Thielen's good. This is not a criticism. Um, but it is saying Justin Jefferson, I honestly believe, is the most special receiver I've seen in a Vikings jersey since Moss. Because Diggs, yeah. Diggs was damn good. Yep, Diggs was good. Uh, but he's not Jefferson. No. He, can, he can't make the same plays. No. Thielen is damn good, but he's not Jefferson. Jefferson's a special talent, which is why it drives me crazy when he doesn't get the ball, because you're, you're literally passing up opportunities. I feel you. So... JJ, do the gritty. Same page here. JJ. Let's do the gritty. Judge, Judge James. Judge, that, 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 All right. The gritty. Oh, no. All right. That, that one. Okay, we're done here. Comments from YouTube. That's a wrap, baby. Love it. We'll be back tomorrow. State of the offense, or not state of the offense on, on Tuesday, but realistic Randy and Alex Boone tomorrow on Purple Daily. We can't wait for it. State of the offense is Thursday. State of the offense is Thursday. I got offense on the brain. After, That's fine. After that great performance. That's fine. Okay? I got offense Keep on the up. brain. Comments from YouTube. Purple Keep Daily. Seven days a week. Hit subscribe.